Well, hello, students. Welcome. My name is Mac, and this is Amy Jo. And so we are part of the Brentwood campus. We're so excited to be with you today as we dive into God's Word. We're getting towards Easter, Amy Jo. You ready? I'm so excited. <laughs> really love Easter. It's going to be awesome. Uh, we understand that you actually have a family member that is celebrating a birthday, so including celebrations. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, Skylar is going to be four. Okay. And so he has been looking forward to this week for a long time. He wants a Halloween birthday cake. I think the pandemic got him all confused. So yeah. he wants a Halloween birthday cake. I don't know. But I love cheesecake. You That's do. my birthday thing. Yeah. What yeah. about you? So I am a, we grew up, you remember Baskin Robbins had ice cream cakes oh, yeah. growing up. And so chocolate chip, it's, it's like old reliable to me, nothing super spicy about it. But I loved and always expected to have a Baskin Robbins chocolate chip ice cream cake. I love that. That's it was awesome. Delicious. So with birthdays, right, I can remember growing up, there are several things that you get to choose for that yeah. birthday week. And so I don't know if y'all's family does this, but we did favorite birthday meal. I yes, same. Yeah. What's so, your favorite birthday meal? My favorite birthday meal is probably my mom's homemade chicken pot pie. Oh, and uh, it was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> so I knew that anytime October 3rd come, came around, my mom was going to have the chicken pot pie going. It's like an hours long process, but yeah. it was just a representation of her love towards her I son. Love it. it was awesome. It. So what about y'all? What did you grow up with? Did you have a birthday celebration or anyone in your family you like to give a shout out with? Yeah, we uh, I have an older brother and myself and then my mom and my dad and uh, we didn't have the same meal yeah. every it's cheesecake was yeah. the thing. And then I always got to pick one friend who uh -huh. could come and spend the night, and then we would get to do whatever activity I planned. Now for us, what is happening right now is we all got deep dish pizza from Giordano's. <laughs> <laughs> we ordered that from Chicago. Oh, so I miss it. I know. It was so yummy. Anyway, so that's, that's what we do now. Very cool. Yeah. Well, with birthday celebrations meals, today we're going to talk about, Amy Jo's going to walk you through one of the most important celebration meals in Scripture of yeah. the of what is about to come. And so I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about the Last Supper and just hearing what God's Word has to say for us as we get towards Easter and what it represents. Yeah. Well, as we move into talking about the Last Supper, I want to talk a little bit about pictures. And the reason is because the way that Jesus left the Last Supper with his disciples was to give them a picture. So pictures are meant to do what? Remember, right? To go back to those moments and remember. I took some photos that are always in my office. This is a um, photo of the wedding between Daryl and I. You probably can't see it, but um, it's, it's in my office all the time. Uh, this is a picture. I'm glad you won't be able to really see this one of me on my graduation day from high school. All the big hair, all the big bangs right there, and my mom and my dad. And I have this picture that I'm not even in. And some of these people I don't even, I never met. Uh, but this is five generations of my family. And my mom is right there and my grandma is holding her. And so this is in my office as well. I also have pictures to remind me of mission trips that I've gone on. Some of you are actually in pictures of mission journeys that we've got to serve together on. This is to England. And then of course, I have pictures of my little kiddos. So there's Skylar and Scout when we got to go on a family trip together. But all of these pictures remind me of moments or people, things that are important to me. And I love that Jesus gave us a picture to remember who he is and what his mission is and how much he loves us. So as we dig into the Lord's, uh, the Last Supper, uh, if, you, if you look at Luke 22, uh, there's the supper that the disciples and Jesus came together to have. Now, this supper actually was a tradition. All of the Jewish people would celebrate Passover. So really, this is Passover, but then Jesus takes it and gives them a different picture. So Passover, if you, if you kind of look at it like geeking out for a second, a hyperlink, you know, when you're on a website and you click a link and it takes you somewhere else, we could hyperlink this story and it would take us back to Exodus 12 because that's where the Passover started. God gave the Israelites a picture um, in the midst of all of the, the plagues, the very last plague, if you remember, 
was um, God was going to send death really to all of the homes of the firstborn sons. But for those that sacrificed a lamb and took the blood of that lamb and then put it on the doorposts, they would have death pass over. And so death would not come to that home. God wanted them to continue to remember, remember who they were and remember what God did for them and what he brought them out of. So they celebrate Passover. And there's a, there's a whole bunch of different things that has gotten added to that meal. But originally, if you go look at Exodus 12, you're going to see some primary things that would be served at that meal. There's always a lamb. There's always bitter herbs. And the bitter herbs were to represent the slavery, the tears that were shed for God's people when they were in slavery. And then there's unleavened bread. And that's to remind them that they were being taken out. They were um, leaving. God was bringing them out of slavery. So let's hyperlink back to Luke 22. And this is what it says. Luke 22, 14. Jesus says, When the hour came, he reclined at the table and the apostles with him. And then he said to them, I have fervently desired to, to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And then he took a cup. And after giving thanks, he said, take this and share it among yourselves. For I tell you, from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread and he gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he also took the cup after supper and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. So Jesus has taken a picture of the Passover, and now he's done something beautiful and new for us. He is telling his disciples and he's telling us the lamb that was served at that Passover, he's saying, I am that sacrifice, the, the body broken for you. He is the sacrifice for us. And then the cup with the blood, that is his blood given for us. So just like the Passover where they took it and obeyed and put the blood across the doorposts, we as Christ followers have an opportunity to say, we want his blood to cover our lives. We want him to have covered us so that death does not come to us. We want to be taken out of slavery and, and saved um, and live forever in a relationship with Jesus. And that's the new covenant that we get to have with him. Well, students, I loved how Amy Jo brought together awesome pictures from the Old Testament into the New Testament as we're discussing this really awesome moment in human history where Jesus brings the disciples together for the Last Supper. Because all the pictures that she talked about uh, from the, the lamb's blood being over the doorpost to what was being eaten at the meal and what those things connected, they all point to this promise, right? Uh, that God was going to fulfill everything in human history so that you and I can have life and have it abundantly. You see, through all throughout Scripture, God gives pictures which lead to promises through Noah that he's never going to leave them and he's never going to bring anything to the earth that's going to destroy them, that he's going to protect his people. You see through Abraham that he's going to give him a land, right? A picture of land as a promise that he's going to create the people of Israel from his line. You see throughout David and his promise that God was going to actually bring the Messiah to David's lineage. And then finally we get this picture of what Jesus is going to do, how he's going to bring all of these things together as a promise that you and I don't have to have the burden of sin on our shoulders, that Jesus took that upon himself that you and I don't have to live a perfect life, that we don't have to fulfill everything that the law has, that God fulfilled that through his son Jesus, that he lived a perfect life, a sinless life. And lastly, that you and I don't have to be separated from him, that through Jesus' death and resurrection, we have been brought back into the wonderful promise of his fellowship, that you and I can have life and have it abundantly with him. So for you, as we continue in this Easter season, what are the promises of God that you need to hold on to? The promise of that he's never going to leave you. The promise that he wants to give you life. But ultimately, if you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, we want this Easter season to be the best season ever for you to realize that God loves you. That he sent his own son Jesus to be that perfect spotless lamb so that you can have life and have it abundantly.
So what are those promises? What are those pictures in your own life? How can you see Jesus working in and through those? Lord, I pray and ask that you move among our people, that you remind us of your son Jesus' picture, uh, that he is a promised one, that he is the one that has come uh, to give us life and give it abundantly. May any person that does not know him as Lord and Savior, may they come to that decision today. May they see your son Jesus in a way that they cannot help but choose to follow him. Thank you for the promises. Thank you for the pictures in our life. May we continue to love and serve you each and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, students.